Welcome. In this segment, we're going to talk about the measure of rates. The learning objectives we will cover in this segment include defining and calculating the measure of rates, define the concept of person time and be able to apply it to calculation of rates, and lastly, to interpret rates within the context of public health research. A rate measure measures the occurrence of new cases of a health outcome in a population. A rate is not a proportion because the denominator is not fixed. Instead, a rate accounts well for the realistic situation in which a population is dynamic and changing over time. Populations at risk change due to changes such as births, deaths, and migration. In a study population, a person can decide to no longer participate in a study. Thus, some people may be lost to follow-up during the course of study. A rate takes into account the sum of time, called person time, that each person remains at risk for the disease or health outcome under study observation. In our previous lectures or segments, we have already learned about prevalence and risks. Now we will discuss why a rate is a preferred measure to use. There are important advantages to using a rate rather than a risk or a prevalence measure. Rates are more flexible, more exact, and capture the reality of often having a dynamic, changing population. Rates can also be used to study repeated events where a person can develop the health outcome, then no longer have the disease or health outcome for a period of time, and then develop the same disease or health outcome again. The reason we don't use them all the time is that rate data can be more costly and challenging to collect. In order to calculate a rate, these are the following steps we use. First, we must define our study population, then determine the number of new cases of the disease or health outcome, and then finally specify our denominator, which is the person time at risk. The formula for rate is as follows. The rate is the number of new, or incident cases, divided by person time. Now let's discuss person time in more detail. In order to understand how to calculate a rate, you will need to understand the concept of person time. Person time is the sum of time that each person remains at risk for the disease or health outcome and under study observation. Person time may be expressed in units of person years, person months, person days, or some other scale. A person in a study can stop contributing person time for a variety of reasons, such as death, leaving the study, moving to a different country, or the person develops the disease or health outcome during the study, or the researcher is unable to follow up with them, or the researcher cannot locate the person. The use of person time, as opposed to just time, enables you to handle situations in which people die or migrate out of the study population, or where there are dropouts in a study and where you have not been able to follow your entire study population at risk to watch for the development of the disease under investigation. Thus, the follow-up period does not have to be uniform for all participants. That's an important point to remember. Person time for a group is the sum of the times of follow-up for each participant in that group. Now we'll show you how to actually calculate person time. Here is a simple example of calculating person time. Each of the horizontal lines represents the person time experienced by one person. Note that there are five persons depicted here, subjects one through five. Each notch represents one year of completed observation. So for example, subjects one, two, three, and five have lines that start at year one, indicating that they have completed year one. In this depiction, an X represents death. D represents the disease or health outcome of interest, and L represents loss to follow-up. A subject's person time is the amount of time they are at risk, so events like death, or X, developing the outcome of interest, or D, and loss to follow-up, L, mean that the person is no longer 
at risk for the following time period. We will add up the total person time for the subjects in this study. We will follow each subject's person timeline across horizontally to count up each person's person time contributed. Subject 1 contributed 4 years of person time before dying. Subject 2 contributed 8 years of person time before the end of this observation period. Subject 3 contributed an initial 4 years of person time, then had a gap when they were not under observation, and then contributed 1 more year of person time before getting the disease under study. So all in all, Subject 3 contributes 5 person years. Subject 4 contributed 5 years of person time. Subject 5 contributed 6 years of person time before becoming lost to follow-up. If we sum all of this person time, we get 28 total person years. We can now find the rate over this 8-year time period. Since only one subject developed the disease under study, our rate is one case per 28 person years. We often rewrite a rate to refer to more standard number of person years, such as 100 or 1,000 person years. So the rate of one case per 28 person years is equivalent to 3.5 cases per 100 person years. Note that since this graph is on a scale of years, we can very easily calculate the amount of person years contributed by each subject. Now we'll give you the opportunity to calculate person time in this video quiz. Now that you understand how to calculate person time, let's use this information to calculate a rate. Remember, in order to calculate a rate, we must define our study population, determine the number of new cases of the health outcome, and specify our denominator, which is person time at risk. Let's look at this example of calculating the rate of viral infection among women undergoing cancer treatment at several large medical centers. We have 5,031 female cancer patients. Among these women, they contributed 128,557 person days of observation. Among the group, 609 patients developed a viral infection while in the hospital or within 48 hours of discharge. So let's answer the question, what is the rate of viral infection among this population? Let's start with the numerator. This is 609. The denominator is the 128,557 person days. When we do the division, the rate equals 0 0.0047. We can then convert this to a more easily interpretable statistic to get 4.7 cases per 1,000 person days. Now let's give you the opportunity to calculate a rate. This concludes the segment on the measure of health outcome occurrence known as rates. In this segment, we have learned how to define and calculate rates. We've also defined the concept of person time, and you've learned how to interpret rates within the context of public health research.